Tonight's notes are about what life was like in the South during the war. As you can tell from the picture here of a mansion in the city of Atlanta that was scarred by shelling, meaning cannon shot. Um, life gets pretty tough as the war goes on for people in the South. So we're going to take a look at some of the problems and, and issues that people in the South were facing as the war progressed. So throughout the war, people in the South were urged to support the war effort in a number of different ways. Obviously, volunteering for the Army was a big one. But there were other ways they could help as well. Buying war bonds, right? These were basically like certificates um, where that money would be used to help fight the war and then later on you could um, redeem it and, and actually make money. Um, paying higher taxes. So people in the South were expected to pay 10% of their crops to help feed the army and pay an income tax so the government would have enough money to pay for the war. And people were expected to accept the shortages that they faced, right? Um, so not having as much food, not having as much um, supplies and clothing and, and all of that without complaining, right? Because the North had most of the advantages. They had more materials, more supplies, more factories. The South didn't have those things, so people in the South were, were pretty much expected to just kind of deal with it, right, and, uh, and, and do so without complaining. But the problem was that the South's economy was really, really struggling. There we go. Prices rose very quickly because there were so many shortages. So if, if you, you know, if you've got, take for example, um, fabric, like cloth, if you've got a lot of it, the price will be low. But when there's not as much of it, the price shoots up because it's in such high demand. So price for things as is, is, is basic as bread and eggs shot through the roof and people had trouble paying for them. In addition, the South could not make money off of its biggest crop, cotton. And they couldn't do this because the Union was blockading the Southern coast, right, as part of the Anaconda Plan. The B stood for blockade the Southern coast. So the South was having trouble getting its cotton out and making money off of it. So the South's economy was really having a hard time. After the first year of the war, the South started a military draft. So they actually put in a draft before the North does. In 1862, the South starts a draft. And the rules kind of changed over time, but eventually, if you were a white man between the ages of 18 and 50, you were eligible to be drafted into the army. Unless you own 20 or more slaves. Well, obviously, people who owned 20 or more slaves were the wealthiest people in the South. So, kind of like in the North, if you had $300, you could, you could pay to avoid having to serve in the army. In the South, if you were a wealthy plantation owner, you could avoid serving in the army. And so this led people... To, who didn't have as much money to be really upset, right? And they felt like that the war was really a poor man's fight, that the rich did not have to, uh, that the rich really didn't have to take part in it. By 1863, the strain of the war was really beginning to show in the South. In, right here in Richmond, there was a bread riot, right, where women in the capital city actually took to the streets with, like, clubs and bats and, and uh, 
looted and rioted in the streets of Richmond. Um, they were so angry over these high prices and the fact that they couldn't get basic food like bread. And so they went on a rampage and they're smashing store windows like you see in the picture here, women smashing the windows of a bakery and, and they're just going absolutely crazy. Um, and they're, they're looting stores and stealing stuff and eventually um, the Confederate government puts down this riot and breaks it up. But it, it was um, very telling that even in the Confederate capital city, there were riots over the price of bread and the price of food and the fact that people couldn't get what they needed to have enough to eat. By 1863, more and more men were deserting the Confederate army to go home and help their families, right? Their families are having a hard time. They're suffering. And so uh, more and more men were leaving the Confederate army. And as opposition to the war sort of spread among the South, the Southern government took steps to actually suspend people's rights in order to keep them quiet and in order to keep them from speaking out against the war effort. Again, as the war went on, as it got later in the war, 1864, 1865, huge chunks of the South had just been completely devastated from all the battles and also from that strategy of total war that we talked about, right? Where Sherman and his troops would just basically destroy everything in their path. And so you see in the picture here, this was actually the city of Richmond, right? At the end of the war. Um, and, you know, whole blocks, whole buildings just burned, shelled out, the whole city is pretty much devastated. And then on top of that, at the end of the war, as the Northern Army moved into areas of the South, people in the South would actually run away. They'd flee their homes in order to try to get away from the Northern Army, right? Because they did not want to be under Northern rule. So things are pretty tough in the South, right? Um, for folks who, who were on the home front, um, we're not part of the army. We're just trying to survive and make it through the war. Things got very, very tough. 